fancy earrings there. I've decided I'm gonna be fancy. You should. That's right, because the name of the game today is elegant lounging. Mm. You know what that's all about? Is lounging elegantly? Yes, it is, Rob. <laughs> I took a stab. <laughs> We're gonna teach you two DIYs for the price mm. of one. Caftans mm -hmm. and cocktails. Mm. Rob's gonna take care of the cocktails. Let's go. That's Rob. That's Marcy. And we're the Handmade Heralds. Mm. And uh, we're gonna get to some DIY in today. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get everybody started with a little DIY for the body. Nice. And you are going to go... DIY for the mouth. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay then. Okay, bye. All right, people, it's time to get our sew on. You and me are gonna make this loungy, drapey, beautiful little elegant thing that I've got on right here. I found this at the Walmart when once again I was confronted by the change of temperature. I don't have a lot of layers going on in my handmade closet. I have a lot of uh, summer maxi dresses and evening gowns. You know what? Uh, let, me, let me get you some B-roll of what this actually looks like. Chuck, Chuck, can we run that B-roll of the loungy drapey twirl? Thank you, Chuck. Thanks. Elegant lounging. This is simple enough to make in like an hour. For real, it is just three rectangles. There's a back rectangle and there's two center front rectangles. What really is going to make this baby sing is your fabric choice. Something that is drapey, looks good on both sides. It doesn't have to be saturated on both sides, but it has to look decent on the inside because this is open and it's going to flow and you're gonna see the inside. I am going to be using this wonderful drapey rayon that I got at my beloved Janky Stowe in New York's Garment District. This is a rayon. A lot of people run from rayon. Don't run from rayon. Rayon is wonderful. Rayon is cool in the summer, keeps you warm in the winter. It's made from plants. Like you can at me in the comments if you don't like rayon, but I love rayon. Rayon is righteous. So come on down, come on down to the floor. Let's get down and dirty on the floor today, huh? Let's go. We're gonna use the snip and rip method to get our three panels. Simply measure, snip, and rip. Always test a small swatch of the fabric you're intending on ripping. Some fabrics don't wanna be ripped. Of course, you can just mark and cut these panels if you'd rather not rip. My two center front panels are 21 inches wide by 48 inches long and my back panel is 46 inches wide by 48 inches long. And yes, I will put all these digits in the description box in centimeters as well. Boom, we've got our three panels. It is time to tackle the shoulder seams. Now you could simply sew this up at a half inch seam allowance and have those raw edges to deal with, maybe with a zigzag, or you could get fancy. You could get fancy here, huh? and use a French seam, which is what I am going to do, mm. because again, the word of the day is elegant lounging. That's two words. Ain't you supposed to be making me a cocktail? Are you ready for it? I am ready for it. Let's I'm, a, go. I'm about to operate heavy machinery, so the time is perfect. I don't know about that, come on. Oh my goodness, <laughs> don't you look dashing and fancy? Well, you said we were doing something fancy, so. This is wonderful. This, by the way, folks, is the vest that Rob made. That's right, Darren Fancy. This is the vest. How about them apples? How about them apples? You guys have been asking for this cocktail for a minute since Rob mentioned the Make Marcy Mary cocktail. But it had another name first. Yeah, the Bazooka Baluna. Mm -hmm. Why was it called that? Because it smelled just like Bazooka Joe bubblegum. A lot of folks out there, you'll know what Bazooka Joe is, but if you don't, go to your little five and nine, your 7-Eleven, your 
bodega, wherever you get chewing gum, get yourself some bazooka chow. It's actually, it's kind of nasty, but <laughs> the smell is really it's good. Classic. I'm gonna let you make it oh. while I go prep some some seam work over there. Okay, I'm very excited for my my lubricant for the operating of the heavy machinery. All right, so I'm gonna start with a little um, London Dry Gin because Marcy likes gin. I base a lot of her cocktails off of that. Secondly, we got a little uh, aperitif called Suze. Suze is made from the gentian root. It's been used for hundreds of years to treat stomach disorders and make people feel better. And they use the bark on wounds. They do all sorts of stuff, but it's really tasty. Thirdly, we have Saint Germain. This is from the elderflower and it is a wonderful liqueur. It adds this sweetness. We also have a little simple syrup here. Now, a lot of people think you need to go buy simple syrup. I don't know why, because it is so, so easy. Get yourself some really good water that you would drink and really good sugar that you would eat. Put those two together in a pot. You turn on the heat high. You whisk it up till it dissolves. Let it cool, put it in the fridge. You're good to go. Lime juice, fresh lime juice. I squeezed it because makes things easier. Last but not least, we have Peychaud's bitters. Now Peychaud's or Creole bitters, it adds this fantastic bit of anise. It really makes the cocktail. I think that's gonna be it. We're gonna put these here together and I'll show you how to do it. Get yourself a handful of ice, throw it in there because you have to have water to bring out the cocktail. Next, you have one and a half ounces of gin. Next, you have a half ounce of Suze. Now you want a half ounce of Saint Germain. Next, we have our fresh lime juice. In the summer months, we tend to go a little more citrusy, but now in the autumn, uh, I'm thinking quarter ounce is best. Now we have a little bit of simple syrup, about a quarter ounce. Now we're going to stir, make sure it's nice and chilled. You get all those flavors meshed in together. Water is very important in a cocktail. <laughs> Last but not least, we're going to float two dashes of Peychaud's or Creole bitters right on top. A lot going on in this thing. I hope you enjoy. Excuse me. Are you drinking my cocktail? Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Thank you for the sustenance. You're welcome. Put some comments down there if you have any questions. Enjoy. people it's time to stitch but first it's actually it's time to to pin so let's just let's just put her down right there and let's get to pinning our shoulder seams so we can stitch you're gonna take your back rectangle which is your largest rectangle and lay it so that the right side is facing down and the wrong side is facing up right side wrong side we're gonna start at the top of this rectangle here. Take one of our center front rectangles and lay it down so that the wrong side is facing down. We're gonna pin from the outer edge all the way in to the edge of that center front rectangle. On slippery material like this, pin so that the head of my pin is all the way against the fabric. This makes the pin act like a stitch. Now we're gonna shimmy over. We're at the other outer edge of our back. Take your other front and same deal. Pin from the outer edge all the way in. Now let's look at this center here. You can see that our two center front rectangles don't meet in the middle. That's because you need space for your neck, okay? Right in this open space here, I'm going to mark down half an inch. 
and now we're going to cut this area away. And now we get to stitch it up. Oh my goodness, look at you just sitting here needing to be sipped on. Okay. Elegance. Elegance everywhere. So you can see, uh-huh, all those raw edges are nice and enclosed, and so our drape is going to look pretty from the outside. She's starting to become a wearable thing. Press the shoulder seam towards the back of the drape, or in other words, towards the largest rectangle. Next up, we've got to tackle those perimeter edges. Now because I ripped my fabric, you can see we've got some edges here. You might just want to trim those up before you start this next step. This rip does give you a nice clean edge. It will just give you a little bit of a fray. So you want to cut away the fray from all of your edges before we get to this next step. Clean up on aisle six. Of this thing. Lay your fabric down with the wrong side facing up and then we are going to fold in about a quarter of an inch and press all along that long edge. And now you just fold it in again and press all along that long edge. You're going to do this same press on all of your edges, including this center neckline edge because um, it's just a straight line. There's nothing fancy going on there. That's it. Top stitch all of your pressed edges down and then um, it's almost time to have something to go with this cocktail then. Ah. Top stitched and ready to go. Well, almost ready to go. There's a hem that we need to deal with, the bottom of the drape. You could just do the same thing you've done on all these other edges, or you could maybe like add some trim to the bottom. Final thing we have to do is stitch the quote unquote sleeve hole for this thing. And by sleeve hole, I mean tack this baby together. So here's the neckline of our garment and here are our shoulder seams. Fold the garment along the shoulder seam and take the long side edge of the garment and lay it out flat. And we're matching the edges of the center front panel to the center back panel on that long side edge. Okay, now I'm gonna measure down from the shoulder seam, 16 inches, throw a pin in it, 
and then from that pinpoint, I'm going to stitch two inches down and one and a half inches in. Yes, and I will also throw centimeter measurements down in the box. And that is it. You are done though. And so, and so is my cocktail, which is very, very sad. Oh, hello. Hello. That's perfect timing. Thank you. Mm, yeah. The the robe is done and yes. it, it needs somebody to model it. Mm. Maybe you want to do a little modeling for the people. <laughs> oh, it would look so good on you no. though. Hey, I've been modeling this whole time. Hey Chuck, why don't you roll that tape of Marcy modeling? How dare you talk to Chuck? Hey, listen, I'll talk to Chuck all I want. Chuck? Emphasis on peace. <laughs>